Developing this afternoon, nearly 3,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine are making their way to Southeast Texas as hospitals are gearing up for the first shipment to arrive. Officials say it should be here by the end of the week. You're looking at video from the Medical Center of Southeast Texas where the vaccines will be administered to their frontline workers. Now, thousands of vaccinations are expected today for frontline workers across the country, with the second vaccine likely just days away from approval. Tom Castillo has more details surrounding the Moderna vaccine. As frontline medical workers receive doses of the Pfizer vaccine, we could see a second option to help prevent COVID within days. Tomorrow, the FDA's outside advisory panel, VerbPAC, will formally review Moderna's vaccine candidate. Next week, assuming the authorization by the FDA of the Moderna vaccine, we would expect to ship 5.9 million doses of Moderna vaccine from this very facility. An FDA review found Moderna's vaccine to be more than 94% effective and that it may also prevent the spread of the virus, suggesting asymptomatic infection could be reduced by 63% after a single shot. Health experts hope additional data in the next few weeks will confirm even higher levels of protection. Which really would help us then not only uh, uh, protect against uh, this disease, but also potentially eliminate virus circulation from the population. Moderna's vaccine uses the same messenger RNA technology as Pfizer's and requires two doses. But it does not need the same sub-zero temperatures, making it easier to store. For now, it's Pfizer's vaccine reaching the arms of essential health workers nationwide. Arriving Wednesday at the largest hospital network in the nation's capital and more than 4,000 miles away in Anchorage, Alaska. And as UPS and FedEx track deliveries, both companies tell NBC News they have teams of meteorologists monitoring winter weather conditions around the clock with contingency plans in place in case there are potential delays. Meanwhile, among those who've already gotten their first dose, Angela Mattingly, a housekeeper for the University of Iowa Healthcare. So far, says Angela, no side effects. You feel safer. I do. I feel 100% safer. I can't yeah. wait to get the second dose. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, drive through vaccines for health care workers. I feel like a pioneer. <laughs> I mean, after everything that is done to people I know, it was a no brainer to come in and get the vaccine. So. We'll take a look at Southeast Texas coronavirus numbers now as our hospitals continue to fill up with COVID patients. This graph will tell the entire story. The rise in the last two weeks is almost as significant as a summer surge. So how are hospitals handling the surge? Right now, COVID patients make up 48.8% of the ICU patients, and it's another day that our ICU beds are at max capacity. On Tuesday, the number of COVID patients in ICU actually dropped a bit, but as you can see right there, we're way above the 14-day moving average. As COVID hospitalizations increase, it appears more of the patients are needing specialized care in ICU. In terms of new cases, we had 119 on Tuesday in the region, 60 of them right here in Beaumont. Health officials say some of it's due to the Thanksgiving spike. Well, it's been a cold morning throughout Southeast Texas. Here's a live look from our Roofing 911 Skycam Network over Port Arthur, where it's very, very chilly tonight, or actually not tonight, this afternoon, I should say. <laughs> Let's get an update on your forecast with Christiana. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. We are seeing overcast out there right now here in Beaumont as well. Uh, cloudiness should start to move on out of here and give way for some sun today. But overall, a cooler day. We're going to be no higher than the lower 50s across southeast Texas. And look at those dew points. Humidity levels are low. Overall, a beautiful chilly day out there. Breezes are going to be picking up gusts up to 20 miles per hour. So bundle up, stay warm and then enjoy it because Thursday morning we are dropping down into the lower 30s. So a light freeze there, but check it out Friday, Saturday, a bit of a warm up. We will talk about that in your extended forecast. It was divisive when they put the pharmaceutical in name up there. It was divisive when they took the name off, and it's going to be divisive if they try to put it back on. Delaying a decision, the Beaumont ISD School Board is considering renaming the stadium after former Superintendent Dr. Carol A. Butch Thomas, but the renewed debate was tabled by the board. The Board of Managers back in 2018 voted to change the name to Memorial Stadium, a move they said they would heal divisions within the community. 
but some say it's done just the opposite. Well, at this time, it's still unclear what other names are being considered by the district. Two members requested that the Board of Trustees add the measure to the agenda. Now, School Board President Thomas Segui declined to say which members made the request. Ultimately, renaming of the stadium was postponed because all of the members were not in attendance. Now, since former Superintendent Carol Butch Thomas's name was removed from the stadium back in 2018, there has been a growing push to put it back up there. But not everyone feels the same way. Careful if you're going to uh, start changing the names of the, of the stadium because you don't want to do anything that is further uh, divisive in the community. Well, the name Memorial Stadium was chosen to honor current and former schools throughout the district's history. The Board of Trustees is expected to vote on a name change for the stadium next month. Shifting gears to the transition of power in Washington. More than a month after the election, more Republican leaders are now recognizing President-elect Biden's victory. As Kristen Wilker reports, many are signaling it's time for President Trump to abandon his challenges to the results. This morning, growing pressure on Republicans to acknowledge a political reality after the Senate's top Republican, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, congratulated President-elect Joe Biden for the first time since the election. As of this morning, our country has officially a President-elect and a Vice President-elect. The two speaking by phone Tuesday. I had a good conversation with Mitch McConnell today. He talked to, he, I called him to thank him for the congratulations. Overnight, President Trump responding to McConnell in a series of tweets, writing, too soon to give up. Republican Party must finally learn to fight. People are angry. With Congress set to officially count the electoral votes on January 6th, McConnell on a conference call with Senate Republicans warning his colleagues against objecting to the election results, according to multiple sources, calling it a terrible vote for Republicans who would be forced to decide between acknowledging the election results or backing President Trump's false claims of fraud. An increasing number of Republican senators are acknowledging Biden's victory, even as President Trump still refuses to concede. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris telling ABC News it is time to move forward. I think it's critically important. I applaud Mitch McConnell for, for talking to Joe Biden today. You know, it would have been better if it were earlier, but it happened. And that's what's most important. But overnight, revelations that President Trump is looking to turn up the heat on his rivals before he leaves office. The Associated Press reporting the president is considering pushing to have a special counsel appointed to investigate Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden, who is currently under federal investigation for questions related to his taxes. Hunter Biden says he has handled his affairs legally and appropriately. The AP, which cites several anonymous Trump administration officials, also says the president wants a special prosecutor to look into his own baseless claims of election fraud.